Tonight on Reporting Scotland. Fears for the future of support centres for armed forces veterans, including many with post-traumatic stress. You don't want to think it's going to happen because it's frightening. It would be as 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 frightening. What what happens now? Hello there. Good evening. There's doubt about the future of a service described as a lifeline for hundreds of armed forces veterans, BBC Scotland can reveal. Veterans First Point centres were established using cash from the UK government's LIBOR fund. That cash is about to run out. Local health boards are now having to pick up costs with some help from the Scottish government. But there are currently no guarantees of long-term funding. Fiona Stalker reports. How we treat our servicemen and women when they return from war is steeped in controversy. 200 metres to the east of... Recent wars in Afghanistan and Iraq swelling the numbers of veterans left traumatised by conflict. And there are those still fighting demons from battles even further back. For Jack Dunlop, simply sitting and chatting on a park bench can be terrifying. He served in the RAF during the Aden emergency in the 1960s. Post-traumatic stress disorder was triggered when he was showered with body parts and wreckage during a plane crash. And there are times when his PTSD brought him close to the brink. You avoided people. You were frightened to go out. Uh, I couldn't go to the hairdressers because you, you were... You were choking when the barber put the, the cloak around your neck. Uh, I couldn't go to opticians. Again, you were, you were, any, any situation you were trapped. It's a beautiful day. How are you doing? Oh, I'm okay. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Yeah. This chronic anxiety eventually forced Jack to seek help from Veterans First Point. I think we're actually scraping the surface. There is a, a, a massive veteran community in Scotland, and particularly in the northeast, with our long heritage of, 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 the, of military connections. The veterans and their families deserve the help and support we can provide. But the long-term future of that support is uncertain. NHS Grampian and Highlands have yet to commit to funding. The Scottish Government says it's exploring future sustainability plans for the centres and has provided some interim funding. For some, that's not good enough. It would be a scandal if this was allowed to fall for a very relative short, short amount of money. In the great scheme of things, for the amount of benefit that is, comes through from this uh, first service, um, it's, a, it's a real help to, uh, to ex-service personnel. It should not be allowed to fail, and it must not fail. You don't want to think it's going to happen, because it's frightening. It would be as, 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 as frightening. What, what happens now? For Jack and hundreds of other war veterans in Scotland, that question remains troubling. Fiona Stalker reporting Scotland, Aberdeen.